It's Asriel Lawless, and you found me here with R.M. Alexander here on Hellavello. You took the elevator down. Glad to see you. And uh, R.M. Alexander, what does that stand for? What shall I call you? Actually, it's Robin Alexander, and it's my middle initials in there, too. So. Very good. So Robin Hi. Alexander. Mm -hmm. All right. And uh, but you write under R.M., Yes. Out on Kimberly. <laughs> <laughs> and um, what'd you just say? Partially. I also have another pen name. That's so, what you said. That's what yeah. you said. <laughs> we'll circle back to that one. All right. Um, <laughs> all right. Um, so the first question I ask all the guests here on the Lawless interview is, when did you get started writing? When did you get the bug to sit down and write a story? Um, I was probably I, 10 years old. Um, I was over, I read my whole childhood. I was one of those kids. I bet you can relate, you know, shoving books underneath the bed when you're not supposed to be reading at night, you know, before the kids, the parents come up to check on you. That I was that growing up. That's and. Nice. <laughs> and at 10 years old, I was actually at a friend's house, my best friend's house, and we were bored and I picked up a notebook and I picked up a pen and I started writing my first story. Nobody's ever going to see it ever. <laughs> well, you know, you're 10. What are you doing? <laughs> so, yeah, no, but, yeah. but uh, you sure you're not putting that one on Bella? I am absolutely positive. <laughs> I've joked with other guests about, you know, after they see the bonuses go into your closet and going for any kind of writing that you've ever done in your whole life. <laughs> yeah. It's in there, but nobody can see it. <laughs> so um, then, well, so you got, you got started, you go, Hey, the bug has bit me. I'm writing stories. I'm 10 years old. What about as an adult? When did you write a story that was first published out and was available for somebody else to get and to read? Okay, so um, from the time I was 10 until I was 32, no, 30, yeah, 32, um, it was a hobby, it was, I put it down, I pick it up, I wait months, years, whatever, um, before writing, in between writing, and when my oldest child was born, um, for some reason, that was the moment, and it clicked for me. We didn't want me working. My husband and I decided we didn't want me working outside the home. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I have to always be doing something. And I know it sounds silly, even with it, like, you know, a newborn, you're always doing something, but um, it, that was the moment that it clicked for me. And I published my first novel in 20, um, went down the, the rabbit hole of running the gauntlet of, you know, trying to traditionally publish right, and do all that fun stuff. Um, but the first book published in 2013, 2014, something like that. Oh, cool. Yeah. And what was that? That was a romantic suspense um, under the title of Matter of Choice, but was not the first book that was fully written. It okay. actually published first, the first book that was fully written and went to traditional publishing paths was the shadow series the shadow series mm -hmm. and Ooh. that's a paranormal sci-fi um romantic mashup <laughs> we're just gonna toss it in there and see how it right. do, see how it do you know yeah yeah <laughs> And it's still one of my best-selling series, strange enough. Great. So it sounds yeah. wonderful. And so, when did you when did you publish the Shadow series? And with um, whom did you publish it? Did you say that went trad pub? And I tried, but um, they didn't pick it up. Which, fair enough, it needed some. I figured out it needed more revising and proofing <laughs> and you know, all that fun stuff. So, um, it published six months after Matter of Choice did. The first book did. Oh, okay. So it, it published six months. So what was the first book in the Shadow series and how, how many volumes is the Shadow series? It's four books. Um, the first book was Veil of Secrecy. Veil of Secrecy. All right. And so that was six months after Matter of Choice. And then you just carried forward with the Shadow series 
uh, there in 2014, 15, and 16? Yeah. Well, um, also from Shadows, I released um, a few more romantic suspense books. Mm -hmm. um, there was um, The Right One, which is now called Betrayed. I recovered and retitled it. Reskinned it. Reskinned that baby. <laughs> And then um, did the Strategies of the Heart series, which was Romantic Suspense. Um, and then all of a sudden, um, a character popped in my head, and she did not want her story to be Romantic Suspense. She wanted it to be adventure, fan, um, yeah, adventure historical fiction. Wow, cool, cool, um, cool. Yep. And she's a Tomb Raider um outlander type character i was just gonna and, say she wanted to be laura croft yeah she yeah she did so i said okay fine well i can't put you under rm so therefore melody ash was born and ah yes and so um that's my time travel series that's um, cool yeah and she's still we're still work in progress with with Caitlin and working that through. So, <laughs> uh -huh. well, that's wonderful. Melody Ash, this yeah. is so great. I mean, wow, all the experienced authors on here. I'm just so, so overwhelmed sometimes at the number of books you guys have, have written and sold. And just, it's, uh, it's really cool. Just goes to show that, that uh, something else I talk about here a lot on the show is the quality that you get. With mm -hmm. Bella, you know you're finding good quality reads out here it's not uh, right. garbage and and it's stunning that it's not garbage right because yeah. of the ease of use yes yes um, it's just shocking yes when you find it oh god when, when you find the garbage people just pounce on it you know uh -huh. <laughs> oh, well you know the bot garbage the absolute guaranteed it wasn't somebody that wrote it like the rewriting of tale of two cities up there yeah yeah we all get yeah look dude we know you're lying now you couldn't have even got through reading that thing much <laughs> less <laughs> much <laughs> sit and write it <laughs> we know you know we know you messed up now all right so when did you hear about kindle vela um actually i received the email and the invitation to go ahead and start with the pilot um back what a year a little over a year ago now yeah um and because I was so busy with the Caitlin series with Web of Echoes um it wasn't anything I was really trying to get started with right um and then in the fall um I had an idea to start writing a vampire story and I was like nah I don't want to do it, it doesn't fit with Melody Ash it doesn't fit with RM Alexander where am I going to put this where am I going to put it, this? Right. And so um, in October, I have a writing friend. We work together a lot. Um, Tonya's like, you you got to do it. Just do it. I'm like, all right. So picked up Kindle Vella. I'm, I'm going to throw Immortal Guardians on there. It's not going to do anything. It's going to be absolutely horrible. It's going to be an experiment. It's going to fail. And I'll leave it alone. <laughs> wow. And it did actually the exact opposite. So. <laughs> Oh, and I love your cover on Immortal Guardians. I just think it's really beautiful. The the girls standing there and just looking out over the the devastation or whatever there and just tough, you. you know, just tough. Yeah. Ready, ready for whatever comes. And yeah. Like that. She and is. she does look very Laura Croftish. You found you <laughs> good one there. And so Immortal Guardians, and that was your first one out there. When did you mm -hmm. publish it? First episode came October, middle of October, end of October hmm. of last year. Um, and I started getting the reads that I was not expecting. So I said in November, I sat down and said, okay, maybe I need to take this a little bit more seriously. Yes, indeed. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yep. Saw, that, saw that bonus and went. Well, yeah, I had one episode and I think three reads and got $14. And I'm like, wait a minute here. <laughs> right. And you were expecting like a quarter of a cent. Yes. Yes. And yeah, absolutely man. everybody to hate the story. Yeah. And... Uh, uh, I don't understand that one. 
but I just, I think you're ill, like so many of us, you know, um, because your work is wonderful, Thank absolutely you. wonderful. And it's, uh, I'm so excited to be out here in the same, I'm over here in the field, but I'm way back over here on the fence. <laughs> I've read your work. Oh, stop it. I've read you too. <laughs> So that's very sweet and but you know it's it's nice that i mean experience teaches you virtually freaking everything you know what can you yeah. do without some experience yes. not much not right. much somebody right. some of us are completely hand-blown prodigies gifts from god and things like that but boy those people are few and far in between and I certainly do not claim to be one of them. So, <laughs> you know, it's it's wonderful to be out here and see more experienced writers because it feels like, God, you know, I'm somebody. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that imposter syndrome is absolutely brutal anyway. So, oh, I God. You can't, can't run away from it. It chases you everywhere. It did me. Yes. Yes. Still. Chased, yes. Yeah. Chased me in my corporate job. I was good at my corporate job. You know, I went pretty high. I was, yeah, you know, pretty, pretty pleased with my work. And, um, but, but like every day I had to deal with imposter syndrome. Yes. It's why, why do we, that? It's so much easier to doubt ourselves than to. Yes, right. It is. Good. I think pretty woman said it, you know, when she said it's so much easier to believe the bad things exactly yes it's yes. so true so after you saw the uh the bonus on, on immortal guardians what did you what did you put up next i mean sorry what was the absolutely altruistic reason that you wrote another story and put it up on kindle vela with zero expectations <laughs> Well, I was actually getting paid for what I love to do. No, I think <laughs> the brutal, a, honest truth. Yeah, I'm just yeah. joking around, man, because I, I mean, and I've said it before, we, we were raised in a capitalist country. So no matter how much you sit back and you go, you know, I'd like to go back to the barter system. I want to grow my own vegetables. I want to trade tomatoes <laughs> with my neighbor. Doesn't matter. Put a dollar on a string, throw it out in the street. If you're American, you know, run after it. That's all there is to it. Well, Yeah. Absolutely. And um, this is actually what I, I mean, my kids are getting to be in their teens. Well, I have a teenager and a preteen. So, you know, this is what I, I, I've been out of corporate America for 13 years. Huh? I don't really want to return. <laughs> oh, good. It sounds so wonderful. I mean, I love the, oh God, I don't want to go back. Yeah. So anyway, keep going, keep going. What'd you write? So, um, Seeing that Immortal was doing well, I went after, I had another idea for a ghost story um, and thus Restless was born. Mm. Um, and Restless is actually, I'm um, a Chicago area native um, and there's a mansion in, I haven't even said any of this anywhere else on the web. So, um, Ooh, but there is, there's a mansion in Chicago, South Chicago called the Schweppes Mansion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there is, a whole lot of um, legend and tales and ghost stories and be, it has a very interesting history. So uh, Restless is based loosely on that mansion. Whoa. And some of the legends that surround the mansion. Um, and um, then I decided there's another story I have been sitting on for since way back in Veil vale of Secrecy times. Yeah, um, called the remembering. I always had the title, but I had no idea what I wanted to do with it. Yeah, um, and so Melody Ash, the Melody Ash um, alter alter ego of me, decided to pick that up and throw that on on Bella as well. Wow, that is so awesome! And so we've got Restless, mm -hmm. and what's the Melody Ash one? Melody Ash is the remembering. The remembering. Yeah. All right, so now I want to hear about all of them. So tell me now about the first one, your very mm -hmm. first, Immortal Guardians. Okay, um, so Celeste, you know, everything we know about vampires 
might not be true. Um, Celeste is actually a vampire and she's a guardian. Uh, vampires are actually watching out over humans. Wow. And um, from the Fae who are actually determined to destroy us um, and those that they don't destroy will enslave or turn us into pets. So uh, Celeste's prime only job in the world is to protect us. Um, until things start going a little bit sideways and um, she also meets a Faye who is not following the rules of what he's supposed to be. Um, and he's turning her world upside down along with all this other stuff that might be happening within um, her world that just isn't matching up anymore. So it's she's got this Faye dude rocking her world, right? He's, he's, he's teasing her right now. She, she, he's got her captured with his blue eyes and he's not making a whole lot of sense. All right. Not making <laughs> a whole lot of sense. When do they ever, when those hormones kick in? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so are we going to be going into the bedroom with the heroine and the main character there? I write clean. Um, always have. So no, we won't have any on, on page um, details there, but we'll probably be doing some fade to black as, as time moves on. Some fade to black. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> so, all right. So you write clean now, then let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. What was the need to take on? And, yeah, okay. There's probably like there's probably like 57,000 reasons to take on a pen name, all right? <laughs> I just, I think of it as something you do if you're getting ready to write some smut. <laughs> Actually, um, it was more of a, I didn't, like I said, um, Caitlin with the time series, she did not want romance as part of her focus of her story. Uh -huh. um, there's a little bit of romance in her story, but it's not the driving force between with anything she does or anything that takes place. Um, whereas Melody, um, so that's the Melody Ash side. The R.M. Alexander, um, there's a lot of stuff that happens in all my books, um, but romance kind of drives the boat on, on a lot of it. So that was the reason for separating the two was more of a marketing thing. And so that readers knew when they picked up an RM Alexander, it's gonna be romance. When they pick up Melody Ash, it's really not, so. Yeah, all right, all right, all right. So it's about the romance. Yeah. It was about separating the expectations. Yes. For there being romance and adventure. Right, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. All right, all right, you know. <laughs> I'm learning I'm learning I'm learning like everyone in here you know and but you've been in the biz for a while so it's it's wonderful to be able to learn from other people that have had experience so is that all you got up right now the three yeah on Valley it is okay and so for the immortal guardians I know that one is really popular how many episodes do you have and are you um is it ongoing or did you finish it it's ongoing, and right now I think I'm on episode 29. Awesome. Yeah, we're pretty 30 will hopefully together. be dropping tomorrow. We're pretty close together. So, um, and what's your average episode length? Um, but usually, just for Mortal Guardians, just for Mortal. For Immortal, um, they're going anywhere from 700 to maybe 1500. Okay, so nice short little mini bites yes There's the checks mix yes the checks mix episodes yes like that. yes <laughs> you might get a pretzel you might get a wheat check <laughs> that's right <laughs> 700 you got a wheat check <laughs> that's right or a little m&m <laughs> that nobody can taste <laughs> <laughs> so yeah okay that's good all right so and that's about 29 episodes now. And um, now uh, the next one, so the restless one. Um, mm -hmm. Now, did I already say when did it go up? I, I know you had a month on you with yeah. uh, the Immortal Guardians. So 
the restless went up with how many episodes did you introduce that serial with and when exactly uh, november um i believe that went in november it might have been early december not really sure i don't remember it's not that it um, matters. yeah Period. um but i unfortunately can't seem to get myself ahead of my episode so it went live with just one and we i write and drop write and drop um because with with life there doesn't seem to be any other <laughs> that's see that's my method all right and i get on with these authors who are like well i i didn't and i'm not making fun of anybody and it's like but i i didn't want to release it until i was completely finished with the book and yeah. i had scheduled every single episode i am okay. scheduled up through 2027 <laughs> <laughs> like, what no really no shit and, <laughs> and uh you know it's so intimidating so intimidating yes. some of these writers especially the young ones oh my god oh my god you know what i gotta do some writing sprints because i can only write ten thousand words a day <laughs> just i like, wish Ooh. i am a notoriously slow writer and i just i think um i get squirrel syndrome too easy and trying to kids and we now have a puppy and i mean just life uh yeah i'm notoriously slow i think you're full of crop caca <laughs> i think you're full of it you know um but okay uh anyway so yeah <laughs> i gotta ask you this i gotta ask you this okay so restless did we say how many episodes in restless yet 21 just dropped yesterday Look at you, look at you. All right, there's 21 of them and their average length, are they about the same? Pretty close, yeah. Okay, okay. And then Melody Ash, the remembering went up when? That went up in end of April. Um, and yeah. that, one's, that one's trailing behind. It's only got three episodes, but I'm hoping to drop one today. That's awesome. I know you will if you want to. I know you will. <laughs> It's, it's always exciting. We were talking about that before we started recording. It's always exciting to drop an episode. Is it, it right? Is. You feel good. You feel good. Especially those of us who are doing the drop and right, drop and yes. right, drop and right. Okay. <laughs> we're living by the sword. That's right. <laughs> Ready to jump off that edge any second. <laughs> so, so that's great. And have you been pleased with your... Um, with your writing you know what it's brought you in terms of readership and though ola um i'm never pleased with my writing but <laughs> yeah. i <laughs> i love the feedback i love the feedback that's one of the things i really love about vela is with books feedback if you get it is very slow in coming it seems where vela it's pretty instantaneous and that is immensely helpful for us with those brutal writing doubts to just get that little nudge saying okay we like it please keep going <laughs> yeah. yeah i was um I interviewed a, a writer the other day and they shouted out you know tears of hawkins right uh -huh. she's got like i don't know what 57 serials going or I something know. no it, it's a lot it's a lot it is and uh there's one that she has it's called dear diary and in and um you know, the gal on the, on the interview was like, I, I'm just gonna get on her now because she needs to update that. She needs to update that. And I said, I am certain that her knowing, just knowing that you are out there waiting for another episode will get you one pretty quickly. Yes, exactly. Exactly. You get those, we're waiting on the next episode. You're like, it's coming now. <laughs> I'm, gonna ride it. I'm in the parking lot of the grocery store. I got ice cream in the trunk. The kids are screaming. I'm going to ride it sitting here behind the steering wheel on my phone. Yep. Just because you asked for it. Just and that, is, that it. is so close to the truth. I mean, that is it right there. <laughs> <laughs> and Vela is so great for that. Vela is, is wonderful for, you know, instant gratification yes and uh and it is great and we also have we have social media now this is like i think vela is the evolution of reading is what i think probably um i think it's going to take some time but i probably 
Yes. And I think it's, I think the evolution is cyclical. Okay. Like anything else, right? Mm -hmm. Like back in the eighties, you couldn't sell a book series to save your backside. Right. You know, they wanted standalone novels. They wanted them the freaking size of the thorn birds, you know, right? <laughs> <laughs> and they wanted them to be one and done. Yes. And then it went to everybody wants series now. Yeah. Everybody wants a series. Everybody wants a series. Everybody wants a series. Yeah. Same with anything on the, on streaming. Mm -hmm. You, you, they pop it up. You gobble it up in a day, sitting on your couch, you know, watching your SI joint get tighter and tighter. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, nine hours later, you stand up and you go, what just happened? <laughs> yeah, what happened? And why did they just divide that into a movie? Why didn't they just like, you know, yeah. or just like, like say, here's, here's three, three hour segments, knock yourself out. I don't know, but they put them all up at the same time so that you can either, either take a bite mm -hmm. or make yourself sick, you know? Right. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> blow your entire day why not <laughs> yeah, exactly exactly or yeah or you can call in sick to work because you won't watch this series yeah or stay up until four o'clock in the morning you know and i think oh. i just i think i think that that mean that means that we're in a cycle of it evolving into serial reading mm -hmm. i think so too yeah especially with devices you can take your phone with you everywhere and anywhere so you know, you can take, instead of carrying a paperback, you can carry 50, you know, however many, infinite number of reading choices and sit down at the doctor's office, pick up a Vela episode while you're waiting for them to call your name and tuck your phone back in your purse and... Bob's your uncle. Yeah. Good to go. There you go. Yeah. And that's, and that's such a convenience. And I do that all the time all the time what you just described there you know going to doctors and waiting in in lines and yeah the endless bullshit that we have to wait for in our in our very crowded and too freaking busy world yeah um and it's nice and it's nice to have it right there because we all have our phones surgically attached to our hands right <laughs> yep. i think that's the thing now right yeah <laughs> the absolute trauma and, and hysteria of not being able to find your phone <laughs> oh my god I know it I know it it's really something but uh it's it is it's just it's culture yeah. it's the now it's who we are becoming now whether it's evolution or devolution I'm not going to argue that point right I won't, we won't go there no, we won't go there because we don't need to go there. All we're doing <laughs> is trying to write shit for them while they are running toward the edge of the cliff. Okay. <laughs> need something to read before you go over. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and we want to provide that for them, don't we? Yeah. Now, are you going to go to book with your cereals? Is that the plan? Are you going to take that pathway? Yeah, I will. I've already got a couple people asking for it in paperbacks, so um, they have to sit and wait patiently. Um, but yeah, it will. See, I just think that's the greatest thing, and I haven't quite gotten there yet. I'm I'm going there. I'm going there, and I'm just gonna I'm gonna be like the rest, the great uh, Naomi Alt, the Chew. I'll be like her. I'll be like Tirza. <laughs> yeah. I'll be like you. I tell everybody, send me your books, man. I'm going to, I want to buy them. I want them signed. I want them here in front of me. Pretty soon I'll be holding them out like a fan. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because I just, I think it's, I think we're doing something magical here. And I think it's so much fun. It is a whole lot of fun. It is. And, and you're well hooked up on social media too. You're, you're out there into everything <laughs> like the rest of us. Mm hmm posting your stuff and trying to get out there in front of the the eyeballs that will read you and yeah. you know and I think that it's it is a good thing I think that Amazon has done something smart here okay in giving us these bonuses why why because we're going out and building the audience for them 
yeah, they're not doing much of anything with this. No, they're no. Letting us, I'll take care of it for them. <laughs> right. And, and here's that their logic is that they're giving us enough money mm -hmm. to make it worth our while. Right. Y'all go on out. We're going to give you, it's almost like giving you an advertising and yeah. continuance budget. Yep. Here you go. You, yep. if you get into it, you get, I'm sorry, you get out of it what you put into it. You ride, you go out there, you hustle. You know, you beat bushes, you you hijack neighbors, you, you know, yeah. go around walking around parking lots, knocking on windows. Hi. I was just hij hijacking a neighbor last night about, do you ever read? Well, you really want to check this out. Have you ever heard about Kendall Vela? Yeah, exactly. I come in for a minute. <laughs> why not <laughs> exactly you'll find them out there waiting be, be like a creeper you know and you go to an elementary school you got no business there i'm a grandmother you, those days are long over but no no i'm not doing that i'm i see all those parents waiting in line to get the kids arr, arr, knocking <laughs> see i just gave somebody a good idea right there yep that's right <laughs> But truly, and I think, I mean, think about a situation like that. Think about waiting in line for your kid or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, you've already texted everybody you know. And right. what are you going to do? You're just sitting there. You're sitting there looking at Facebook or whatever. Why don't you just read a book, Mumpty? Read a book. There you go. And here's a way to do it right here. Kindle Vella. Yep, exactly. <laughs> so So um, are you, I know you're out on Facebook a bunch. Uh do you consider that your best social for it getting is. Out? I need to I need to branch into TikTok, but being on camera is um intimidating to me. <laughs> so I haven't gotten quite there. It's it's a work in progress. Um I hear there's a lot of good opportunities to reach readers there. Just well, it seems like if you hit, you hit. Mm -hmm. It's like a slot machine kind of, you know, it seems to be. Yeah. yeah. And, um, <clears throat> cause I know that one, one gal out there got like 900 reads in a day. That's just, I would be so thrilled. I would go you would hear me from where you are. <laughs> I would be on my rooftop. <laughs> I would go squaw over the moon. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? <laughs> yeah. Yep. And uh, yeah, so like I say, you hit, you hit. And, uh, but it's just, um, you know, but the, the one of the, one of the secrets of TikTok, one of them is that you have to have a thousand followers before you can even put a link up. Okay. See, I don't even know that much about it. Yeah. And until you get that thousand followers and man, you're just out there standing on your head, you know, putting <laughs> pies in your own face and <laughs> running across the street, you have a near misses, somebody killing you, hoping your viral, your video will go viral and shit. But yeah. you know, until you have a thousand, you can't even, they have no idea who you are. Yeah. And can't. Yeah. So very, uh, yeah. And then what about Instagram? no well i it's out there i don't ever do anything with it yeah I have to, but i don't right 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 but facebook i see you quite a bit mm -hmm. and they're all the time and a lot of those ads can just you can just take them and just put the video straight onto instagram yeah i can and i think i have a couple times but i just forget right um, right so my yeah. social i'm out there i'm just I have to be better about posting on social media than I am. Well, yeah. And um, there's, there are some that do it really well and I think they get rewarded for it, but boy, they really hammer the shit out of it too. Yeah. And I remember when I first started, I mean, I was trying to do everything that like that movie, everything all at once. Yep. You know, and, yeah. And, and I, it just emotionally kind of crippled me. Yeah. It's a lot. Yeah, you can't be on that much without paying a price. Right. And uh, and that was an awful lot of on. You're really right. out there with your social media. Yeah. So I'm gonna um I'm actually just hired my 13-year-old to start helping me out with some of this stuff. So 
I she's not allowed to have Facebook for herself yet, but I'm like, you can start. So I'm going to be showing her and training her and I've got my first employee. <laughs> oh, how very nice. I like that. RM Alexander Inc. there. Hey. <laughs> right. I do like it. I think it's great. And I wish I had a teenager to help me with my socials because um, it's hard to know what to put up. And they're natural at it, which yeah. just boggles the mind. Yeah, well, <clears throat> think about it. They grew up with this stuff in their hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't even see it till we were grown. Right. So, well, yeah. Mostly grown. Mostly. Yeah. Mostly grown. <laughs> mostly grown. Mostly grown. I was grown. <laughs> <laughs> You're not that far ahead of me. <laughs> no. Uh, anyway, so we've got another question for you. You've got your three cereals <laughs> out there. You've got Immortal Guardians, you've got Restless, and you've got the Remembering. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so we're going to have links to all those in the description of this video when it goes up. Uh, what would you like to, who would you like to shout out for the Vela's that you read? Okay, definitely Tirza Hawkins, because like Spider Sight was just plain creepy <laughs> in all the best ways, but really, um, um, definitely Tirza, um, Gen Sequel. Um, I have to give a shout out to my, my writing buddy, uh, TJ Loveless. She's got three out there right now. Oh, um, and, um, I give me one cereal for these people. So what would have Jen? Oh, see, you're going to put me on the spot. Yes. That's what I do. I read so many of them in a day. I'm trying to think of her title. I just read yesterday. <laughs> Jen, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Here, man, I got a computer right here, for God's sake. Here, let's find out which one you're reading. Does she go by Jen out there or? Yeah. Or Jennifer? It's Jen. Okay, we got the island. We got the witch. Yes, the island. There okay. we go. Thank you very much. All right. So you <laughs> like the island of Jen. And I guess probably you're just saying you like that because that's the latest one you like. Probably. I th well, I read it, what, yesterday, the day before. So, yeah. The island. How many has she got up? Do you know? She's got quite a few too, doesn't she? She's got maybe five of them, I think. Oh, no, I was talking about episodes. I'm sorry. I wasn't oh. here at all. Um, I meant how many episodes did she have up on the island? That I don't know either. I've been reading so many. I'm just going from flipping tab, yeah. tab, tab, forget it, forget it, forget <laughs> it. I'm not going to find it. But uh, anyway, so then we have TJ Loveless. Did you tell me a story name for her? Um, her G.O.D. Killer is really good. And that one's completely released, so... Got to give a shout out to her. Oh, wow. um, she's my writing buddy. We've been working together for since the beginning. So, um, and um, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Oh, that's all you get. Three. Oh, okay. I'm, we're just going to stop at three. Oh, okay. That way, that way you don't have to think anymore. Well, I could, I mean, seriously, it'd be like, if I spit out like a hundred names really it, before I take, before I take my next breath, that's what I'll count, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, so you, uh, you've been out there reading, you've been out there writing, you've been really happy with how things are going. But if I gave you the keys to the car that was driving Vela, mm -hmm. is there anything you would do to improve it? Well, Couple it's in times. beta. So it, yeah, I mean, they, they need to keep working out the kinks and stuff. I think um, reader uh, tracking the readers and making it more friendly for readers is I think something we all wish right now. Um, yeah. yeah. You know, a lot of people just don't even know it exists still. I think it's getting better, um, but it's still, you know, they're letting us drive the boat here, but a little bit of, just a little bit of help in the back seat might. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
could you at least pass me a beer from the cooler? <laughs> Shoot me some Ghirardelli chocolate or something. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. But instead, we're up there taping our own hands to the wheel. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, I think, you know, just um, making it more known that it exists. Um, because of course they're getting their paychecks too from all this, right? Oh, yeah, hell yeah. So yeah, you know, just a couple nuggets out there might really help yeah. out. Yeah. Well, they did that giant billboard on Times Square, but it's like you know, New York ain't the world, people. Right. Exactly. But don't you know? Wouldn't you have just shat yourself if you'd have been the rider of six guns and a shooter or so what is it what six six gun and a shapeshifter yeah remember that yeah that was the one they put up in Times square i yeah. mean do not have just like i don't know i think i would have just gone ahead and killed over and died yeah most right. definitely <laughs> I, that that is no joke. I don't think i want any more days thank you this was really good i like this last one it's great it's great it's great it's <laughs> Move on now. Right. Everything else is going to be a disappointment after that, like five story billboard of my my story. Right. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, but that'd be nice to have a lot more of those and a lot more cities. Yes. So anything else or is that pretty much it? Go ahead and get us uh, a bigger reader pool. I think right now, I think that's the biggest thing. Um, other than that, you know, the, the interface is, the dashboard is real user-friendly. Um, you know, I think um, the new polling system, that's great because it actually lets them interact instead of just read our comments, which, you know. It's how many times it's used to great advantage. Yeah, right. And, uh, you know, how many times can you say thank you for reading and, you know, make please hit that like and let's move on, you know, so the poll gives us a chance to interact. I think that's great. Yeah. Um, so right now, I think it's a marketing, you know, just a little bit of kibbles and bits to help with the marketing would be. Yeah, kibbles and bits. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. Well, that's a really good example to use because honestly, um, that's a that's a freaking brand name. Mm hmm. And yep. here we call it out household name. Right. So, yeah, that's what we need is a little bit more of that household name. Yes. Kindle, Kindle is a household name now. Right. Don't you agree? A lot of people don't. Exactly. It is. And but, uh, yeah. Yeah. You say somebody that, you know, have you read any Kindle books? They know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, you, do. you ask somebody if they know anything about Kindavella and they look at you like, you know, you've just spoken a completely different language. So, fixing that a little bit I know you know a lot of it's our responsibility because we're the authors but having them just make the make it known that the product's available right 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 exactly so then the very last question that I ask everyone before I I let you go is um what would you like to say to the folks who are clicking on the links here on the video description and reading your stuff for the first time what would you like to say to him Robert? just thank you thank you for your support means the world yeah it's uh, pretty much been the sentiment you know yeah. and uh, we will also put links to your alternate name your melody ash uh, story down there of course thank you and um I wish you the very best of all that Kindle Thank you very much. and in your <laughs> writing and, uh, you know, in the whole, the whole journey, which you've already been on for a while. You're way ahead of me there, like waving at you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm in that little rowboat with a broken oar. <laughs> I wish I could say that I wasn't there with you, but you know, it's, I've been writing a long time, but haven't quite gotten to the, to the level I'd like to be. So, yeah. you know. I think we're all helping to elevate each other. I think I, so too. I love that about the Vela community. We are so, and there's not the drama that there's been in the Kindle ebook community. So. And may there not be. May I hope we, not. May we ever be adults. Right, exactly. Children, you know. Exactly. Um, so I hope that for us as well. All right, hello Vela fans. 
This has been uh, Azriel and of course, Miss Robin Alexander. Goes by R.M. Alexander if you are looking for her in the Velaverse. Um, so thank you so much for watching. Blessings on all y'all, all y'all. <laughs>